I genuinely wonder if people think I'm dressed up as a doctor for these intros because they can't see the back of this. What's going on guys, Logan JYA Drykage here with a long awaited video, that's right, we've got Drytron Combos Volume 2, ready to go post Syac. that's right, those Droll and Lockbirds and those Super Heavy Samurais better stay ready, because we're coming at them with the full force of the Drytron strategy, and these are the combos that are going to help you play the deck as good as you can. We've got some really spicy stuff, including how to play with suboptimal hands, and how to play around and through Droll and Lockbird, and some spicy texts that are going to help you at the tail end of this video so be sure to watch the whole thing use the chapters if you're looking for something specific and don't forget to like comment subscribe i really want to see this video smash not only 10k views but over 200 likes if we can make that happen not only do i promise you a volume three but i promise you a brand new iteration of drytron that will tackle and dominate all of the meta so without further ado i don't want to keep you guys waiting let's dive into this brand new combo tutorial Let's get into it. Ladies and gentlemen, you may have heard the expression once before that all good things start with Alpha Pitch Zeta, and I am here to tell you that is absolutely true, especially when it comes to this combo. This is going to be a perfection plus chaos max lock off of just these two beauties right here, and you need not play Ida 10, which for people like me, that's a good thing, because in my opinion, Ida 10 can be kind of an unnecessary brick. I gotta give kudos to the community for really bringing this combo and pumping it up to the max, so cheers to the folks who discovered this one. This is not a Logan original, but it certainly is something that you're going to need in your arsenal if you want to play this build a Drytron. So without further ado, let's get into things. And usual deal applies. Our usual substitutes here for our names are equally as applicable to get us to our desired end state. I will also flag the fact, though, that you aren't going to be nib resilient if you are starting things off with Nova. But there are other ways to be so. Things like searching orange light, especially if you have a hard-drawn fairy. The same logic applies as in our previous combo tutorials, whether they be from a year ago or a day ago. Keep those broad stroke concepts in mind, and you're going to be performing every time. So let's kick things off, shall we, with Alpha Pitch. Zeta, this is going to grab Ben 10 as we usually tend to do. Zeta will pitch off that Ben 10 summon itself, grabbing you Medionis, and then Ben 10 here is going to search the homie Choju. That's right. I know you haven't seen him on my channel as much recently, but he is still an absolute legend. And I have been. If you watch in our live streams, especially the IRL locals, link in the description down below, shameless plug over, you'll see that we've been playing this build and seeing results. So, anyway, moving things on, we're going to overlay for Moi Beta. Moi Beta effect is going to send off Gamma like so, and then Medionis is our first activation here, detaching off that Moi Beta to special summon back Ben 10. So, those who are keeping track right now, that is our fourth summon. The fifth is going to be Choju here, but you're going to see what I mean by Nib Resilient as we proceed on. So, we're going to tribute over that Ben 10 for the Choju, and it's important here, Choju chain link 1, Ben 10 chain link 2, the Choju is going to be searching more, that's what we'd prefer to chain block, so we're going to resolve them both. Ben 10 here is going to grab us a copy of Perfection, and then Choju can grab any combination of a Ritual Spell and a Ritual Monster. Going to lock and load the Chaos Max that way, as well as getting us Dawn of the Herald. Now, what I mean by Nib Resilient here is that if they don't nib us when we activate Dawn of the Herald, then we're establishing a Perfection with the Guaranteed Negate of the Choju. Even if they do it on Resolution and you don't have a hard-drawn Fairy, that's okay, because you know we still have Engrave. We have a Medionis that we've yet to add back, as well as a Gamma that we've yet to resolve, which means we still have the Chaos Lock fully online through a Nibiru. Just want to make sure that is as clear as day for anyone who might have been wondering. But here, next, we go Dawn of the Herald. Herald, that will tribute off the Choju, summon out the Perfection, eh, usually throw in the far right, doesn't really matter where, and then Dawn's effect in the grave, banish it to add back the Choju. Now, of course, if you have the option to go for the Perfection summon with a Ben 10, you're gonna wanna do that, because that's gonna lead to infinitely more advantage, but this is for broad strokes purposes, if you only had Alpha Zeta and three Dark Rulers in your hand, this is how you'd be doing it to maximize both your safety as well as your consistency. So, we've got our Perfection online, which means we can continue to play. We'll use Gamma's Affecting Grave, pitching off that 
Dark Magician and bringing itself back as well as the Zeta that we detached earlier. Here, since we have our Perfection serving as our safety net, we can go Medionis Reduce to add back. And we don't really need to go into the second copy of Moid Beta here since we do have our materials relatively online right now. We can both detach one off of the Moid Beta and use itself as a material to summon back out that Chaos Max and then link off. If I will say this much, if you did want to, you could. Then we can link these guys off going up into the mighty Dynamond on the top. And then finally, you do have an option, if you so find yourself wanting to do so, you could link off this Zeta into a Link Karibo underneath your Dynamond, or if you have the Field Spell Fafnir up, you're gonna wanna leave this guy online because he is enabling the hidden effect of Fafnir, which is to lower the levels of your opponent's cards. If you didn't know that about this mighty Field Spell, be sure to give it a reread because you might be surprised at how often that can come up, especially against matchups like Cash Tira. So, things to keep in mind. But that is this next combo. Again, Nib Resilient. We're still Chaos Locking them, even if they do drop the Nib at the correct time. And if not, you bet you're facing down a Perfection with one guaranteed one Negate and any other amount of Negates that you have in your hand to back it up, as well as the full Chaos Max Lock, which means no monster effects for you. GG. Well played. Nice Super Heavy Samurai deck that is all monsters. Let's move on to another combo. All right, guys, let's throw things back with our boy Vanity's Ruler, but this time I had a lot of YouTube comments asking me, how can you do both Vanity's Ruler Lock as well as the Chaos Max Lock? So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. It is indeed a three card combo, so you know, not exactly what we're going for off Alpha Zeta. It's going to have to be one or the other in that situation. But since people did ask how to do this, I figured off why not show you. So without further ado, let's get into it. And I think it also is important to mention the substitutes for cards that you can have in your hand to get this done. Prep can replace that Ben 10 easy as can be, as well as Fafnir, Nova, Emergency, or Foolish. Now, if you're using Nova or Fafnir, I want to flag the fact you won't be as resilient to Nib as you will be when you do it the way I'm about to show you. Just things to keep in mind, because Vanity's Ruler is going to be your fifth summon, which means we're playing around the Nibiru as best as possible. Without further ado, let's dive into things. We start things off as all great combos begin. Begin Alpha Pitch Zeta, and kind of like with the Magic Key Lock, instead of going for a second copy of Ben 10, since we already have it or have access to it, we're going to be going for the Chaos Max. Then we'll use Zeta's effect, pitch off that Ben 10. It is going to search off Medionis and bring itself back from the graveyard. Ben 10's effect is going to trigger. We're going to grab ourselves Vanity's Ruler. Then we're going to overlay our boys into the mighty Moy Beta Fafnir, and Moy Beta is going to foolish off Gamma. Now from here, Medionis detaches off Moy Beta, summons back that Ben 10 like so, and we're going to do this resistance. Resilient from Nib, if you've been counting, that was four summons thus far, which means we can just immediately tribute off these two to summon our Vanity's Ruler and be 100% safe from Nibiru. Ben 10 effect going to search. Here we're going to grab a second copy of Ben 10. We're going to trigger our Gamma in the graveyard to tribute off that Ben 10 special summon itself back as well as a Moi, as any name from Grave. I want to flag the fact if you wanted to, you could also search your next card, which is going to be Lancia a turn earlier if you just want to pitch off your Chaos Max for this combo because you are are still going to be summoning this out, or you can summon or search another copy of Ben 10 for guaranteed follow-up. Either one is technically correct. Just wanted to make sure you're aware of all the options. I'm going to put these to the side for now, because our next step here is going to be using Medionis to reduce and add back on that Gamma. Overlay these two for a second copy of Moi Beta. That's right, you do need to use both if you want to have both in this combo line, because this is going to give you enough materials to go into your Dynamond after, because you're going to use the Moi Beta, detach both off of it, summon out the Chaos Max, and now here you can link these two off since it was now properly summoned to summon out the Dynamond on top like so. So you've got both the Vanity's Ruler Lock as well as the Dynamond Chaos Max Lock set up going into your opponent's turn. Let's move on to another combo. All right, guys, next combo is something you're definitely going to want to know, especially if you've seen my most recent Drytron iteration. I think we were at 29. This is going to be the one for our basic Amor Factor plays off of just Alpha Zeta. Now, mind you, this is not going for the FTK, but we will be covering the FTK, so you're aware of it, off of Alpha Zeta a little bit later on. Here, we're just going to be doing the basic play of establishing your Amor Factor in a relatively resilient board state that can really help you play strong into things like Runic, where you're basically FTKing them by virtue of how their engine works. So without further ado, let's dive into it. 
Without wasting time, we'll start things off. Alpha pitch Zeta grabbing off Ben 10. Zeta effect will pitch Ben 10, summon itself, search out Medionis. The start of all these combos is going to look very similar. Ben 10 effect here. I'm going to search Diviner. There are also ways to do this exact same combo with Choju, but in my most recent list, we are maxing out the Diviner because that's how I was choosing to play it. Mind you, it's very easy to adapt it if you wanted to integrate Choju into the line. Here, overlay from Oi Beta. No surprises here. If you wanted to, you could try and bait things out with the Diviner first, but if you eat an Imperm or a Veiler on the Moid Beta, you are still able to play. Sometimes even, I'd argue, a little bit easier than if you are able to resolve the Diviner. So having the Moid Beta eat an interruption here, not the end of the world. But we're going to pretend that it is resolving, and that'll send off Gamma from deck to grave, and then we can normal summon our Diviner next. Now, we are not paying mind to Nibiru as much here. Usual logic applies here. If you want to play more resiliently, you have a hard draw on Fairy, you're searching Orange Light early on. It's simple stuff like that. That's why in this build, it's cool to play things like Kurikara because they're not just defensive cards. They're not just offensive cards. They're also defensive cards because they pair so well with the Orange Light. Send off that Herald of the Arc Light. This is what gives you access to adding the Amor Factor Pain. And now you actually have options. I'm going to choose to play this out in one particular way, but I'm going to tell you another way you can do so. Medionis is definitely going to be summoning back Ben 10 next here. Now, if you wanted to, you could overlay Div Diviner and Ben 10 into Beatrice, Foolish Burial, something like another name, a, a Shizu Shuffler, something like that, but we're not going to be doing that here. Instead, I'm going to be using that Ben 10 as our tribute fodder for the Gamma to get that additional search for free. So we pitch that off, summon back Gamma, whatever name we detached off Moi Beta, and then we get the free search off the Ben 10 here. I think it makes sense to grab the Lancia, and you'll see why. We kind of already have guaranteed follow-up, locked and loaded by virtue of the combo. But Medionis, reduce, add back, of course, and then activate Medionis and now we establish our pain. So detach and send the Moi Beta itself, summon out the pain, Pain's effect will activate on summon to lock them out of their main phase one. That's right, we get to 100% skip that for free. And then we can link two. This is for the basic combo, pretty much. We're linking two off into the IP Mask Arena. Now, this doesn't look like a super threatening board. You're like, what's the big deal here? It's just Amor Factor. But I tell you what, you would be surprised at how mighty this board is, truly is. It's quite formidable. Like I said, we're automatically FTKing Runic decks because if they activate in their Runic spells, they're skipped out of their turn completely by virtue of having to skip the battle phase. And having the IP Mascarena to tag out lets us dodge things. That's right, if they come down with an Imperm on the Amor Factor, we're trying to negate it through other means. You can be like, okay, cool, it's totally fine. Then you get to tag out your IP with the Amor Factor, summon out Dynamon, get a free spin by putting back that Ben 10 we used earlier, so that's another form of removal, and then Dynamondo, and you don't have to wait for them to interrupt. You can do this whenever you want, because afterwards you can use Dynamondo, tag it out, and bring back the pain just like that. Now, you're not skipping them again because this wasn't a ritual summon, but they're back under the Floodgate lock effect, locking out those extra deck monsters from being able to activate, which is relevant against Super Heavies, Runix, Cash Tira, the whole list goes on of the archetypes that are hit by the pain. Now, Dynamond isn't the only thing you can tag out into. If you wanted to and tag out all of your materials, you could also go for an Apollosa on the top. So say the turn skipping was enough, you got them set up, all right, cool, you go for the Apollosa for three, that's three more monster negates locked and loaded, and the whole time you also have that Lancia as another form of interruption. Now, mind you, turn that Lancia into something like an Orange Light if you have a hard drawn fairy, gives you Nibiru resiliency as well as a more powerful ceiling. So all things to keep in consideration, but that is the basic Amor Factor combo. Let me show you one that's a little less resilient, a little less competitive, but is an actual left TK. So I'll show you that real quick. Let's do it. All right, homies, as promised, we are going to do the Amor Factor FTK with just Alpha Zeta. Now, mind you, that's just Alpha Zeta with an asterisk. It's a 2.5 card combo, which means any one of the remaining cards in your hand just has to be something you can discard later on at that point. For representation's sake, we're going to use this good old Blue Eyes White Dragon because I figure it's kind of funny just to throw something like this in there. So, I also have one proxy in here. I'm going to show you on screen the card that you need for it, but it's pretty darn cool that this combo, which you used to have to have Nova to do as a two-card combo, is now possible without, with just Alpha Zeta. So, without further ado, let's dive into it. It's really, really cool to see, and I also want to give a huge shout out and thank you to my friend slash biggest critic, Sai, for showing me how this combo is done back in our server. So without further ado, let's dive into it. 
All right, guys, start things off. Alpha pitch Zeta, search off Ben 10, Zeta effect pitch Ben 10, grab yourself Medionis. And then Ben 10 triggers, grabbing Diviner, and then overlay the two to summon Moy Beta. And important has to be under an extra monster zone. Moy Beta effect of Foolish will send off Gamma, and then we can normal summon out Diviner, use its effect to send off the Herald, and Herald will search out Amor Factor. Now we can go Medionis. Detach one off of the Moy Beta to special summon back, Ben 10 like so. Overlay the Ben 10 with the Diviner. Here we are going to summon our old friend Beatrice. And Beatrice is definitely a ban worthy card. I feel like low key someday Beatrice might actually get hit with the axe. If you agree with me, let me know in the comments down below. If you disagree, let me know why. So we'll detach one off Beatrice, and this is where we enable the FTK. And there's something I want to point out here. In games two and three, sometimes it makes sense to send something like Trap Trick instead of your Thunder of Ruler, which is your main enabler for the FTK. If you guys don't know how it works, you skip your opponent's entire turn because Amor Factor skips main phase one. Thunder of Ruler skips battle phase, which forces them into the end phase. It's the same thing I was saying earlier with how Runic kind of FTKs themselves. But uh, in this situation, we are going to send off the Thunder of Ruler, and we are going to be accessing it again later on, so don't you worry about that. Next, we'll use Gamma's effect in the graveyard, pitching off our friend Amor Factor from the hand like so, and I'll summon it back as well as the Zeta from the graveyard. Now, this is not looking like the safest combo. I do have to flag that for you, but it does work. Next, we can reduce Medionis on Gamma, add this back to hand, and then activate it, detaching two off Moy Beta, or using Moy Beta in itself, or using it and whatever we summon back off of Gamma to summon out the Amor Factor, and using its effect to skip our opponent's main phase one. Next, link one using the Gamma to go into the Link Karibo on the top. Then we can take our Amor Factor and our Beatrice, link those off into the Dynamondo because we need to use a Ritual Monster so we get it off the field that way. And then this is where that card that I don't have yet comes up. We take the Dynamondo and the Link Karibo and turn it into this thing called the G Golem Crystal Heart. Uh, again, it'll be on the screen right now so you guys can see and know what it does. What it is able to do is actually summon back a earth link monster from the graveyard which happens to be dynamondo and it just needs two cybers to make it which is crazy that dynamondo happens to be a cybers so we take these two guys they're both link twos and turn it into our classic friend nightmare griffin on the top and the reason why it was important to summon the Moy Beta to this zone is so we have something that the Griffin stays linked to and we can use its effect to discard, reset the Thunder of Ruler, and now the FTK is set up. So when your opponent's draw phase comes around, or excuse me, their standby phase comes around, you flip up that Thunder of Ruler and now their turn immediately ends. If you guys want to know how to do this combo without the G Golem and with the Nova, be sure to check some of our previous combo tutorials which are on the channel. In the former volumes, we have covered that one before. But let's get on to another combo. All right, guys, one thing that I got a lot of requests for is how to combo if you only see Gamma and Delta as your only names in hand. Now, mind you, if you build your deck consistently, this shouldn't be something that happens too often, but it can come up. And a lot of Drytron duelists don't necessarily know what to do in this situation. So today I'm gonna show you a combo where you can still do the Chaos Max Lock even if you only open Gamma and Delta. Let's dive into it. So to start things off here, you're going to Gamma as your first effect, pitching off the Delta, and since it was sent to Grave, you are able to bring it back off of its effect. You'll immediately overlay the two into Moy Beta, and Moy Beta is going to Foolish Burial Alpha from deck to Grave like so. Now this is where it gets a little weird. If you have no other fodder in your hand, you are actually going to use your Alpha to tribute off the Moy Beta itself to summon it back from Grave, and then search out your copy of Ben 10 this way. Next, you can tribute off that Ben 10 for your Delta, and Ben 10's effect will trigger to search out Divine. Now, if you have another card to reveal in hand for Delta, great, you get the free draw. If not, don't worry. We're still going to get to the full end board. Next, we'll overlay these two to go into a second copy of Moy Beta. Now, we won't be able to use its send effect, but that's okay. We just need it for the materials. Normal Summon Diviner, we're going to send Herald here. Herald effect is going to search, grabbing us Medionis. Since we didn't put Zeta in rotation, this is how we're going to get access to Ritual Summoning. We'll use Zeta for the first time, or excuse me, use Medionis for the first time, detach off Moy Beta, summon back Ben 10, and then immediately overlay it with the level 6 Diviner to summon Beatrice. Now, here we detach 
Watch off Beatrice. This is how we lock and load the Chaos Max by putting it into the grave, and now everything else is easy. Medionis reduced to add back on Moy Beta. It has a thousand attack, and we've got a two thousand attack material underneath it, which we can we can use itself and the material underneath as the whole materials to summon out the Chaos Max. And then we finally finish things off by linking two up into the Dynamondo, and the Chaos Max lock is complete. Now, yes, it is a bit suboptimal only having the Chaos Max lock, but if you're in this challenging scenario of only having Gamma and Delta as your names, you can still get to a full Floodgate, lock your opponent out of monster effects by just having them and going through this combo line. I hope that was helpful for the people who are requesting it. If you're looking for other things in our next volume, let me know in the comments down below. Let's now talk about playing under Droll. All right, my friends, now I'm going to show you a combo for playing underneath the Droll in Lockbird. Now, mind you, this is situational, 100%, and you're going to have to use your best insights to properly counter this strategy if you get hit with the Droll. Now, there's so many different ways to counter this card. I wish there were more, and we're going to go through a few of them a little bit later on in this video. But right now, I'm going to show you one of the basic cornerstone combos that you're going to want to have in mind in case you get hit with Droll. Now, mind you, you only want to go for this route if you have the ability to still combo afterwards, it makes the most sense to be safe and line this up just in case. And what you're going to do is, if you basically already hard opened a way into Ben 10, or you hard opened a Medionis, you might want to consider going for this line or having this line as a safety backup option. Another thing to keep in mind too is if you are able to do so and can pass on resolving a Drytron effect fully or going something like a Delta early to trigger off a Ben 10, say you have a hard drawn fairy, you can grab yourself an orange light early on and then counter the droll that way or keep yourself safe from it like that. That's something that Jordy Wang kind of brought up to me as, you know, it's a big brain strategy. You kind of got to read into your opponent's lines, but something important to have in the arsenal. So right now though, I'm going to show you the line for when you're playing underneath droll specifically and how it kind of works. So let's do it. So in this situation, we're gonna say that we already hard open Ben 10, and we're gonna be using our alpha to establish our safety net. The other way of doing this is if you resolve Zeta first and grab Medionis early and have another way to tribute something for alpha, you can do it that way as well. But let's say we go alpha as our first effect and we already have Ben 10 in hand, but we wanna play safe around Droll. We pitch off the Zeta, summon itself, and that will let us search out our deck for a copy of Medionis Draconids. Now let's say the opponent here, we just searched a card and we're playing a deck that can't play Gamma and we have a monster on our field anyway, they hit us with the Droll at this point. Fair play, fair game. We are still gonna be able to put up Interruption because we can just use Zeta's effect, tribute off that Draconids, don't really care about having its effect online because we can overlay for Moi Beta and use Moi Beta to send off our ritual spell Medionis, reduce Moi Beta's attack on the field to add this back to hand and then use it detaching two off of the Moi Beta to summon back the Draconids, and it is live with its effect to send cards off the opponent's field up to two cards by banishing our names from Grave. Now, yes, it does sound pretty neg, but this is a way to play underneath the Droll, and if you have additional extenders, you can climb into things like Dynamond or IP. You can line up, if you have one extender, you can line up an IP with this, and that's another form of interruption, even underneath the Droll, and the Draconid still puts in work as that big beater who can help close out the games on the clapback. So, again, if you if you can, you probably want to save one of these names in Grave, but this is a very strong interruption not to be discredited because you can counter things like Birth in Kashtira, you can counter the Runic Field spell, send off the Super Heavy Samurai Scales, all things that you are able to interrupt with the Draconid. So don't discredit this as a form of interruption. And like I said earlier, you can do the same thing in reverse if you start with the Zeta and grab Medionis first and have another piece of fodder to tribute for the Alpha. You can bring it back, overlay for Moi Beta that way, and then instead of sending Medionis, you're actually going to send the Draconids itself and then activate it, detach to summon back, and then you can also reduce to add this back into your hand as well if you want to have it for follow-up on the following turn. Just things to keep in mind, this is a very important line to have in your arsenal if you do end up getting hit with Droll and have the ability to play safe around it. Let's move on into another fun way to counter Droll. 
One other thing I do want to show you guys is this beautiful new deck box I got from the homies at Dueling Guard. And if you guys did not know, you can actually go slide on over to their website and use the code LOGANJYA to get yourself a small discount off your order of some top tier deck boxes and other Yu-Gi-Oh accessories. That's right, these things are gorgeous and functional. Hold up to two decks, really high quality materials, and I am so looking forward to flexing on my opponent rolling up to the next event wearing this deck box right in my bag guys this is some good stuff so be sure to go check them out if you want to get something beautiful like this let's get back on into those combos all right guys as promised we're going to talk about one of my favorite tech cards for countering the droll in Lockbird, and this is going to be a throwback for those of you who are fans of the channel from way back in the day now the card in question that i'm talking about it's got high risk high reward and it makes the most sense to side deck in when you know you're going first that is our friend Neospatian Aqua Dolphin. Now, it's not nearly as high ceiling as it was back in the day. Back in the day, we would be able to give up our normal summon and not really care as much, still going for a Herald of Ultimateness with two to three negates. Nowadays, it's a little bit more of a callback, and we have to really decide what we want to do. But I will flag, we can still Chaos Lock, and we can still Amor Factor Lock, not full turn skip, but we can still Amor Factor the opponent very easily just by changing our line of play and at the same time rip out the Droll and Lockbird with our friend if this is our starting play. And not only is that powerful for the fact that we take out that Droll, the Droll is no longer a factor, we also get hand knowledge of everything that's in the opponent's hand. At worst, yeah, we gave up the normal summon, but at best we know everything that they have in their hand. We know exactly how we're going to have to counter their plays and how to tailor our end board depending on what the remaining cards in our hand are. So, without further ado, let me show you how to still do a full combo-esque board with Neospatian Aqua Dolphin used as the normal summon if you were to side in three copies and open it. Let's dive in. So obviously to start things off, you normal summon the Aqua Dolphin as the first play if you are able to open it. And you use its effect pitching off an alpha to look at the opponent's hand and oh look at that, they had that droll, they were going to try and get sneaky with us. We chuck that out of there, it's no longer in the equation, and we burn them for 500 points of damage while also getting able to look at the remainder of their hand. Alpha effect engrave here, since we did use our normal summon on the Aqua Dolphin, we have to take a lot of sacrifices here. That means no Vanity's Ruler, no Choju, no Diviner. So that that means we got to cut straight to the chase, so we're not giving ourselves Ben 10 access. We actually search out straight for our win con here. Now, this is going to work with either one of the win cons that you go for, and there is another combo that you can do if you still want to set up perfection, but right now we're just going to be talking about doing Amor Factor, or if you wanted to, doing the Chaos Max Lock. But it's really, really simple in principle when you think about it. So after you resolve this, you go straight for the throw, go straight for your win con, grab out the Amor Factor, that's what we'll use here, pitch that off for Zeta, Zeta automatically adds Medionis, and then we just proceed to play from here. So if we know they have other interruptions, of course, we want to tailor our play style and the remaining cards in our hand to play around them the best that we can, but if it was just roll, we're still cooking. We can go Moi Beta Effect, dump off the Gamma like so, activate Medionis, detach two off of it immediately, summon out the Amor Factor Pain, skip their main phase one, and then we're not even done yet here because we can push it further. We can reduce the Moi Beta, add back the Medionis again, use Gamma's effect, pitching it off to Special Summon back itself and another name from Grave, and then we can actually make almost the same exact end board as earlier just without as much follow-up by going straight for the IP and look at that bro. We just established the same end board, skip the opponent's main phase one, have them floodgated with the power of Amor Factor and we have the ability to tag out for either an Apollosa for three depending on what their hand is because we'll know everything that's in it or we can tag these two out for a Dynamondo or an Apollosa like earlier mentioned but yeah you can go for the Dynamond and then also tag it back out from the field back into the grave to bring back the Amor Factor. In case you're trying to hit you with interruptions, that's another thing that you can do. And even if you summon Aqua Dolphin, you are still able to establish this board. Now let me show you how to do the Chaos Lock with it. All right guys, same broad stroke setup. We used Aqua Dolphin, we pitched Alpha, looked at the opponent's hand, got that droll out of there, burned him for five. And now if we want to do the Chaos Lock instead, we would use Alpha's effect in grave and same logic applies here. Usually going for Ben 10 is how we line up the normal summons that let us finish up our combo. But since we are kind of skipping that out, since we spent the normal summon already, we go straight for the Chaos Max, use Zeta, pitch it off, summon back, get the Medionis into rotation, overlay for the Moi Beta, activate Medionis, immediately you can detach two off of the Moi Beta, summon back that Chaos Max just like that, link two, 
turning the Chaos Max itself and the Aqua Dolphin into your Dynamon. And then you can use the Gamma's Effect Engrave. Well, first I would probably go Medionis Reduce Add Back, and then you can use the Gamma's Effect Engrave, pitching off the Moibeta to summon back itself, as well as another name Engrave. And here, so you can guarantee that you're living going into the next turn, uh, even though you spent the normal summon, you can still line up the Chaos Max lock, backed up with a Fuko to guarantee that you're going to be living into the following turn. So you've locked them out of the monster effects, even if that doesn't necessarily knock them out completely, you still have the Fuko to guarantee life. You could also make something like an IP, if you have extenders, that might have value in it, but this is what you can do, even even if you spend the normal summon on the Aqua Dolphin. It is still pretty powerful. And while we're on that note, I also want to talk about Fuko real quick, because Fuko is one of our key tech cards that is a counter to the Droll low key. Because if you have two Drytron names, the ability to get two on board, and you did get hit with the Droll, you can just summon this guy and guarantee that you're going to live. I wanted to kind of segue into this strategically here, because Fuko just is a towers monster. Now, mind you, people are playing outs to towers monsters. If they kaiju you or they hit you with a Santa Claus, yes, that's true. That is ways to out it. But if they don't currently have access to those monsters, Fuko is going to be a good, strong counterplay if you get hit with Droll. Now, I want to spend some time finally to close us out by talking about another counter card, just like Aqua Dolphin. That's another way to rip Droll out of the opponent's hand. Let's close things out strong, friends. So friends, we already talked about how Aqua Dolphin can be an effective counter to Droll, but there is another card that does not take the normal summon and does give you that hand knowledge of the opponent, and that is our friend Drag Down into the Grave. Now, if you saw our recent Infernity FTK deck profile, if not, check it out on the channel. This is another way of countering hand traps in the opponent's deck while also getting free hand knowledge. You actually have both players reveal their hands, and you're able to take a card out of the opponent's hand, send it to the grave, and then each player once again draws one card. So if you are opening this along with other good spells and traps, but you want to start things off strong, you go straight for the drag down after setting your spells and traps into the back row, and then look and see if they got that droll. If they do, rip it out of there. If they have two drolls, then you're kind of cooked, because you're going to be drawn on resolution of this, and then they can immediately droll you there. But hey, then you know to pivot your game plan, and you know exactly what you're going up into by virtue of seeing what is in their hand. It's very similar to Aqua Dolphin in that way. So this card's got its up, it's got its downs. It's very unfortunate if the next card that they draw after you rip happens to be a droll. That is certainly massive disrespect, but I do want to flag the fact that although those things can happen, it is very, very unlikely. And this is another sneaky tech card that we can bring on in to deal with them. I also want to give shout out and kudos to my friend Jordy Wang, because even though we did just feature this in the Infernity build, and this is kind of a tried and true old tactic for dealing with hand traps, he has also been testing this in Drytron to great results, so I want to share this tech as another means of countering Droll and Lockbird. With that being said, we covered a lot of content in this video. Multiple, multiple different combos, multiple different techs, and ways to play going into the post Syac format. So if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave a like for more amazing Drytron content, more Yu-Gi-Oh! content in general. Subscribe so you don't miss anything else, and friends, I really appreciate y'all immensely. If you have suggestions, questions, anything, leave them down in the comments down below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you want to join our community for free tournaments, as well as friendship with other Drytron enthusiasts and duelists across the world, check out the link to the Discord in the description down below. That's enough shameless plugging, my friends. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching. Logan JYA signing off a great day. I'll see all you beautiful people later. Peace. The video quality was supposed to be higher, but... Amazon sent me the wrong HDMI input to my camera. I got the capture card. I didn't get the right wire. So it still looks kind of blurry, which kind of sucks because we should be shooting in a lot higher quality. Regardless, it's going to be fixed by next time. <laughs>